I have a project in mind and I wanted a, uh, a current source. And um, so I ran across these circuits, which I hadn't seen before, and I thought they were interesting. And I thought, well, that's a fun little circuit. Let's do that one. Um, it uses a, a TL431, which is this weird two and a half volt shunt reference. It's a weird little device. They use them a lot in switching power supplies and stuff, but it, it regulates two and a half volts and um, in a strange way. But anyway, um, I wanted to uh, have a current sink and um, no, I wanted a current source. Okay. So I wanted a device um, that was referenced to ground, and I wanted to have a current, uh, a current source. Usually, it's a circle with an arrow in it. A current source going through the device, and uh, so uh, I saw this circuit. I thought, "Oh, great! It's it's a current source." They call it a precision current limiter. It's a current source. Um, and it says precision, so I said, great, because I want this thing to be accurate. And it has a 0.1% resistor, so it looks like it's going to be a very, um, a very uh, accurate system. Now, this device sets up a two and a half, let me get a better, uh, I guess I can use this, um, two and a half volt uh, reference voltage here. So it puts an exact two and a half of that, you know, TL431 accuracy across this resistor. So you think, oh, great. And then uh, there's this uh, pass transistor that it controls and stuff. And you get this current going through the thing. Well, unfortunately, you also get a current that flows like this. And it goes through that part. And then, so doesn't really matter how accurate this is now, does it? Because it goes through this thing. Well, how much goes through that thing? Well, it has to do with this resistor, and it has to do with maybe how much uh, base current this takes off of it. So it's going to set up this system where this is two and a half volts. This will be two and a half plus VBE. So this will be two point or 3.2 volts here. And then whatever voltage you have come in, that will drop across this resistor and that will create a current. And then that current will go through this part and then out. And then so it's voltage dependent on the input and it's not accurate at all. It depends. Anyway, this is a garbage circuit. <laughs> I really liked it and I actually breadboarded it. So Let's take a look at it since I spent time breadboarding it. Goodness. Um, so I have uh, it set up for five milliamps. And so there we go. Five milliamps through an LED. And if you go measure it, it's not five milliamps. So let's do that. Oops. <laughs> see. Milliamps. Okay. All right, let's um, take out this wire and we will reference the LED to ground over here. And we are measuring 5.8 milliamps, not 5 milliamps, 5.8 milliamps. Uh, yeah, and the thing was a bit sensitive to other things. So let's get rid of this. So I didn't like my 5 milliamp supply. I didn't didn't do what I wanted it to do. And I found out that I needed about at least a, uh, a 10K resistor here. Okay, they don't really tell you about R. Well, they do carry about R1, but it, it's a function of this, the current that you're going to send on this way, plus the current KA, which is the current through the part. And so you do have to, you do have to do the calculation of how much KA do you have, but it's, fun it's a function of this, of this uh, resistor and this that volt, it's just garbage. Um, so anyway, uh, not what I want. So then I looked at their next circuit and uh, I think somebody came up with this circuit and said, okay, that's a great current sink, but let's do a source. And they did this one. They didn't really think it through very well. All right, so this one here though, look at this. This one, we have some current that goes through this guy. And then we have some current over here and then it goes to this resistor, which is 0.1%, and it sets up a two and a half, 
two and a half volts across this resistor. Now, can any other current get in on this side, right? The only other current that can come this away is uh, this base current. So if you have a, a nice device here, then you won't get any base current, and it'll be exactly your what you want, okay? So I'm going to replace the uh, NPN with a, uh, a FET, okay? I'm going to use a 2N7000 uh, to get rid of that base current. Um, so, yeah, there won't be any base current at all. Very, 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 very tiny. Um, so, I think that will be a good circuit to use. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, why am I doing all this? What do I care? Um, I'm going to be doing a project, another little PC board project. Um, and uh, I have a tool that I have on my bench, and it's all hand-wired. Um, but I do like it, and it is my Zener diode tester. It sets up a current across these two terminals, and then you can just take your uh, uh, take the part you want to test and set it across these two gold posts here, and then it forces a current, and you can measure a voltage. Um, right now, it's about 6.8 milliamps, something like that. It's fairly crude. It uses a JFET as a, a current source, um, but I want to make a, a better version of this if, if I'm going to do a board layout. So uh, the next video will be about uh, what design considerations to do and uh, how I want to make this maybe a little more flexible, a little more accurate. So yeah, let's do that next time.